Hello. Hello, may I speak to George P. Smith, please? Yes, yes this is he. Oh, hello. My name is Adam Smith. I'm calling from NobelPrize.org, the official website of the Nobel Prize in Stockholm. Well, many congratulations on the award of the prize. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's what, uh, coming up to 5 a.m. there, um, did, it, did the call wake you? Uh, no, actually I had just w woken up. Uh, you know, elderly people have a, a difficult time sleeping sometimes, so I got up really early at about 4. <laughs> <laughs> What was your first reaction on hearing the news? Uh, uh, great surprise. Actually, I thought it was one of the sort of numerous jokes. You know, call coming in from Stockholm, <laughs> 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 which is kind of a, like a, uh, a meme. That's really what I kind of thought it was. But um, there was so much static on the line, I knew it had to be real. <laughs> <laughs> It's going, we're going back to 1985 when you had this idea to get viruses that infect bacteria to display peptides for you. Did the idea come to you suddenly or was it a long process? Oh, no, 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 no. certainly not suddenly. No, it was an idea from, uh, from was, uh, many sources because I had all these streams that was very much in my background at the time. So, so it was definitely not something that just popped into my head. <laughs> <laughs> but so much a case of being the, the, the right person in the right place at the right time. It is very much the right person in the right time. I mean, I was trained in immunology, but I also knew a, a lot about this phage, uh, this phage and, and, and in, in classical um, you know, molecular biology, that's what my basic training was in in uh, college. You never know which pieces of information are going to be useful and what you're going to need to combine to make something happen, I suppose. Well, I think that's very, very true. It's like evolution. You really don't know which mutation is going to be the, <laughs> the one that, um, you know, that uh, flourishes. Yeah. Were you surprised by the rapidity with which it was all taken up? And uh, You know, it was, as I say, all those precedents that were in the air, so no, I I wasn't that surprised, actually. <laughs> and I certainly wasn't surprised. Uh, I mean, another, uh, I'm sharing that my half, our half with Greg Winter. So he came out of this um, Cambridge group that had been, as they were calling it, cloning, cloning the immune system at the time. So that was, that was very similar, very uh, allied uh, um, line of reasoning, line, uh, line of research, and um, I was very aware of that too. So um, I, I actually wasn't surprised that, it, that that people would catch on to it oh. because it was uh, something that was it was a as a way of thinking it was very much in the air at the time. Mm. But did, and did you dream that it would lead to, for instance, the therapeutic antibodies that came out of Winter's work? Um, well, uh, that's, that's a good question. I don't, I, I don't think that, um, at the t certainly in 85 that I would have, that I, uh, thought in those terms, although I was very much interested in antibodies and very much aware of the work in the Cambridge group. Um, but, uh, when the first publication of, uh, single chain antibodies, single chain antibodies are sort of pared down antibodies that have the central fe feature of, uh, binding to specifically to an antigen, but are missing a whole bunch of other things in our single polypeptide chains. Uh, at that point, it became quite obvious that, uh, well, I won't say quite obvious, but it, it seemed very plausible that uh, not just small peptides, but um, lar larger folded domains like single-chain antibodies could be displayed on, um, on phase just like small peptides. And, of course, um, the Cambridge group realized that at the same time. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, uh, and, and independently. So, what an, what an um, exciting it, journey to be part of. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess it seemed so at the time. I mean, you know, <laughs> so many years later, it's, uh, <laughs> it seems a little bit old hat. But <laughs> <laughs> what? And I know you haven't had long for it to sink in, but what do you think the prize means to you? You mean what does it mean personally? Yeah. Um, I don't know. 
Well, that's a really good question. I have no idea. I'm <laughs> completely unprepared for this. In my life, I mean, I've been retired for three years, and I have very different interests now. <laughs> Um, and um, uh, so uh, that really, that's a, that remains a question to be answered. I don't know what this this will mean for uh, for my life. Mm -hmm. Well, you have you have plenty of time to find out and plenty of time to mull over it before you come to Stockholm in December. <laughs> well, heard. apparently, I have you know like a few minutes before <laughs> uh, reporters are going to be ringing the phone off the hook. I'm afraid I think the day is going to take a very different turn. So. Um. <laughs> It's been a um, huge pleasure speaking to you once again. Many, many congratulations. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.